Hey there, Cindy here. Welcome and welcome back to our channel. On today's video, I'll show you how I filled out the Form I-485, also known as the Green Card or Adjustment of Status Application Form of my K-2 or my derivative due to your guys' insistent public demand. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you for pushing me to do this. Thank you for trusting me to do this. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Like what I said, I'll show you how I filled it out personally, of course, with the help of my research, the people who I ask and, you know, gave me answers. Thank you so much to all of you. Shout out to all of you. But yeah, so this is how I did it. All right. And so far, so good. I believe I'm doing it right because... <laughs> We already have our green cards, me and my K2, we already have our green cards. Ask me when we got it. Come on, I can't hear you. <laughs> we got it one week prior to the lockdown here in the United States. Oh my gosh, talking about timing, right? The form is pretty straightforward, very easy to understand, but I understand some of the fields or the questions are kind of confusing. And that's why I'm here. That's my job to help you clear things up. All right, so let's start. Without further ado, let's do this. How we'll do this, guys, is we will start on the left section, right, from top to bottom, and then right section from top to bottom. So this first box here is for USCIS use only. We will not fill this out, all right? The second box is for an attorney or accredited representative if ever you did this, not DIY. But I'm pretty sure you won't fill this out because we are doing this DIY. That's why you're watching this video. All right, we will start where the arrow says start here. Type or print in black ink. All right, this is very important, the black ink, because there are situations like me personally, I experienced that, I could not type in my entries or my responses to some of the fields and I don't know why. And I already gave up. I'm like, you know what? I'll just print this out, whatever is in here. I'll print it out and then I'll just handwritten whatever fields is missing information and that is acceptable, definitely. It's not a problem. It, your application form could be a combination of typewritten and handwritten, right? It's never gonna be a problem, all right? So note to all applicants, if you do not completely fill out this application or fail to submit required documents listed in the instructions, UICIS may deny your application. So be very careful. Before you mail in your packet, make sure everything's filled out. All right, all the fields that are applicable should be filled out. You are not missing any documents. All right, part one, information about you. So this is the person applying for lawful permanent residence. So this is going to be for your K-2. Do not forget. Do not get confused. All right. So family name or last name, first name, and then middle name. All right. For given name, for Filipinos, sometimes we give our kids like uh, two names. Like Mark Joseph or John Albert or John Michael. Those are the given names. Do not get confused. All right. John is not going to be the given name and then Michael is not going to be the middle name unless, all right, that's how you named your kid. Other names you have used since birth, if applicable, like if your kid was adopted or there was a name change, right? If the birth name is different than the current legal name, then you will have to fill this out, right? It's the same fields, last name, first name, middle name. If it's not applicable, you will put NA, all right? So in the instructions page, it specifically states in item number three that if the field or space provided or the question is not applicable to you, you will have to put in NA or not applicable, otherwise directed, all right? So if the field is not applicable to you, kindly put NA. It's not going to hurt your application. Right, we go back up, we do the right side, a number or alien number. Our K2s do not have this yet, but don't worry, they will get one 
after you guys receive the notice of action one or the receipt notice. You'll see there that USCIS will assign an A number to your K2. So this fields here are just a continuation of this um, item. The other names you have used since birth. If it's not applicable, just put NA. All right. Other information about you. All right. Date of birth. Pretty straightforward. Sex, male or female. City or town of birth. What city were or was your K2 born in? All right. I'm pretty sure you know this. It's going to be in their birth certificate. All right. And then country of birth, all right? Country of citizenship, typically, this is always the same, all right? Alien registration number, again, they don't have, or K2s does not have alien registration numbers just yet, all right? So put NA. USCIS online account number, not applicable unless your K2 has one, all right? US social security number, this is going to be not applicable just yet because I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of K2s do not get their um, social security numbers until they complete this adjustment of status application because together with this, you will be filling out an I-765, all right, or application for work authorization, all right? In question number 14, do you want the SSA, Social Security Administration, to issue you a Social Security card? So you will say yes for your K2's application. Anyhow, there's going to be a separate video for the I-765 form. All right, and I will link that in the description box or at the top of the video, somewhere there. <laughs> All right, U.S. mailing address. All right, it should be the principal or the petitioner. It's okay, whichever name you put in here. But for me, I put my name here in care of me and then our address. All right, so these are just made up information. If, for example, the information that I picked is lucky enough to be an information of somebody else that is not done on purpose. Everything is just made up, all right? I do not intend to use another person's information, all right? Just a quick disclaimer. <laughs> Alternate and or safe mailing address, all right? If you want to put another address in here, like probably your mother-in-law or your father-in-law or your husband's sister or brother, that's okay. But if you guys don't have issues receiving letters in your address or PO box, then just put NA. All right. Let's move at the top. Alien number, not applicable. All right. Recent immigration history. You will be needing your passport, your I-94 documents here. All right. So passport number used at last arrival, right? You will definitely see that because this number is either in your passport biographic page or your K-1 visa. Travel document number used at last arrival, we don't have that, so NA. Expiration date of this passport, put it in here, month, day, and year. Country that issued this passport, all right, your country where you got the passport. Non-immigrant visa number. This is going to be the K-2 visa number. All right. It's going to be the red font ink in your visa or in your K-2's visa. Place of last arrival into the United States. This is the location of the airport where you arrived. All right. So if you arrived in... Logan in Boston, then that's Boston, all right? If you arrived in New York, there are two airports there, I believe. So you might have arrived in Queens, all right? And then state, where that city is located, of course. 
and the date you arrived in the United States. All right. When I last arrived in the United States, I it's going to be the 22A option, put an X mark, was inspected at the port of entry and admitted as K2 visa holder, son of K1. That's what I specifically put for my K2. If you were issued a Form I-94 Arrival Departure Record Number, all right, so you will put the number here. Of course, I'm going to show you a sample. This one here, the Admission Record Number. All right, sounds good. All right. Expiration date of authorized stay shown on four I-94. Form I-94, let's bring that back here. It should be this date. All right, it's gonna be right under the record number. All right, sounds good. Following, you guys following so far? All right. And then status on Form I-94, of course, K-2. All right, A number is N-A or blank. All right. What is your current immigration status? What I put in mine or in my K2's form is K2 visa enclosed in open and closed parentheses is K1 is now married. Again, K2 visa open and closed parentheses K1 is now married. All right? Provide your name exactly as it appears on your form I-94. All right, so whatever the name is in the I-94, that's what you will put in here. All right, so you need to print out your I-94 and keep it because it's going to be very important. It's going to be very useful for you. All right. Part two, application type or filing category. All right, note, attach a copy of the form I-797 receipt of appro or receipt or approval notice for the underlying petitioner application as appropriate. I am applying to register lawful permanent residence or adjust status to, the, to that of a lawful permanent resident based on the following immigration category. So for us in our K-2s, it's going to be this. 1A, family-based person admitted to the United States as a fiancé or child of a fiancé. So we mark that. All right. So I-797 record, it's going to be the notice of action one and two from our K-1 visa application. All right. So everything else that's not applicable to us. All right. Everything else on the right side from 1D to 1G is also not applicable to us. So you can just leave it blank. You don't have to put anything there. I left mine blank. All right. Number two, are you applying for adjustment based on the Immigration and Nationality Act, INA Section 245I? So that's a no. All right. We are now in page four. Information about your immigrant category. If you are the principal applicant, provide the following information. So for our K-2, we will leave this blank, all right? Because our K-2s are derivative. If you are a derivative applicant, the spouse or unmarried child under 21 years of age or of a principal applicant, provide the following information for the principal applicant, all right? So this is gonna be our information. Right, our last name, first name, middle name. Right, this is gonna be if you are already most likely you are married to your petitioner, then of course you're gonna be putting here your married name. All right, a number you'll see this in our notice of action too. You'll see there a number. All right, should be at the top, of course, the date of birth of the principal applicant or our date of birth and then the receipt number of principal's underlying petition if any and then priority date of principal applicant's underlying petition so if you go to your notice of action two 
those information are beside each other. Ours start with WAC, all right? I believe depending on the country. Part three, additional information about you. Have you ever applied for an immigrant visa to obtain permanent resident status at the U.S. Embassy or U.S. Consulate abroad? No, because we haven't. If you did one time, then you will have to say yes, but if this is your first time, then it's a no. Of course, the fields are going to be NA, not applicable. And we'll slide up, slide back up. Alien number is NA or blank. Decision, date of decision, NA. That's not applicable to us. Unless you did apply for an immigration application other than this first time. Address history. Provide physical ad addresses for everywhere you have lived during the last five years, whether inside or outside the United States. Provide your current address first. If you need extra space to complete this section, use the space provided in Part 14 additional information. All right. So physical address one is going to be the current address we live at. Of course, that's in the United States. All right. So present. This is just, you know, default. It shows present by default. And then physical address two, where you guys lived in the Philippines, remember within five years. So if there is more than one address within five years in the Philippines, then you will have to add that. All right. Of course, date of residences for my K2's case. So from the day he was born until the day we left the country or the Philippines to move to the United States. All right, clear? If you have questions, feel free to comment down below. I'm very responsive. I'll look at your questions and respond to you the soon as possible time, all right? Provide your most recent address outside the United States. So if there's more than one Philippine address or out of the United States address, then you put it in here within five years. Remember that if there's none, just put NA, all right? Employment history, of course, it's, this should be NA unless your K2 work, had a part-time job way back in your country because there are countries who let kids, all right, do part-time jobs or, you know, easy jobs, right, provided they meet the qualifications of Department of Labor, all right? So for my K2, it's not applicable to him. It's all NA, all right? And then let's move to the next page. Additional information about you continued. So same thing, name of employer, not applicable, not applicable, not applicable. All right. Information about your parents. All right. So how I do mine is always mother and then father. All right. Mother first and then father first. Every application I do. I don't know why. It doesn't specifically say anyway, so parent one, parent two. It did not say mother, father, <laughs> so I always do mother first. So this is going to be our information, right? So parent one's name at birth, all right? So if we are already married to our petitioner, the legal name is going to be our married name, all right? And of course... Parent one's name at birth is going to be our maiden name. A number, you know that. I'm not going to repeat myself over and over so that I don't get you bored. <laughs> but anyhow, it's N-A or blank. And then our date of birth, what our sex is, male or female. And then the city where we were born, the country where we were born, all right? The current city we live in and the current country that we are living in. All right, very straightforward. Information about your parent too. This is gonna be your K2's biological father, the biological father's date of birth, sex, and same thing. City or town of birth, country of birth, current city of residence, and then current country of residence. Pretty straightforward. All right, information about your marital history. Of course, 
my K2 is still single. <laughs> if you are married, is your spouse a current member of the U.S. Armed Forces? That's not going to be applicable. How many times have you been married? Of course, zero. All right. Information about your current marriage, it's all N.A. Unless your K2 is married or is not single, got married and all that. So if they are minor and never got married, then it's going to be an N.A. All right. Most likely everything in this page, page 7, is going to be N.A. Because it's all about marital status. And marital information all right we'll go to the next page still the same information about your marital history so it's just na part six information about your children of course it's zero all right and the next fields are going to be the names name or names of the children or child of course it's going to be na if you answer zero here all right same thing. N-A, N-A, N-A. We love N-A. All right. Let's go back here now. Let's pay attention. This is now applicable to us. Part 7. Biographic information. Ethnicity. Hispanic or Latino. Not Hispanic or Latino. Then race. So you will pick your race. White, Asian, Black or African American. American Indian or Alaska Native. Native Hawaii or other Pacific Islander, right? And then height, 4 feet 0 inches, weight 0, 080. 0, because he is like around 80 pounds. So I think I just guessed this number. <laughs> I picked 0, 080 0 because I'm thinking about, you know, K2s could not be more than 100 pounds. So that's what I was thinking. So I put 0, 080. 0. Eye color. And then hair color, so black, 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 black. All right. So general eligibility and inadmissibility grounds, part eight. Have you ever been a member of, involved in, or in any way associated with any organization, association, fund, foundation, party, club, society, yada, yada, yada? So no. Most likely it's going to be a no. If you answer no, of course, the information or the fields at the bottom is going to be N-A, not applicable. Same with this one, N-A, 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 all right? All right, next page is just continuation of general eligibility and inadmissibility grounds. So have you ever been denied admission? Have you ever been denied a visa? Have you ever worked in the U.S. without authorization? So basically, it's about, you know, your entry to the United States or your, your legal stay in the United States. Something to that effect. Most likely, your answers are going to be no. All right. We'll just, you know, scan through it real quick. Issued a final order or exclusion deportation or removal. All right, most likely your answers are going to be no. We'll not really focus on that. All right. So if you answered yes to item number 24A, have you ever been a J non-immigrant exchange visitor who was subject to the two-year foreign residence requirement? Complete item numbers 24B, 24C. This one. If you answered no, to item number 24A, skip to item number 25. So we can just skip. All right, the next questions are gonna be for criminal acts and violations, all right? For item number 24 to 45, you must answer yes to any questions that applies to you, even if your records were sealed or otherwise cleared, or even if anyone, including a judge, law enforcement officer or attorney told you that you no longer have a record so it's most likely criminal records all right something to that effect you must also answer yes to the following questions whether the action or offense occurred here in the united states or anywhere else in the world 
If you answer yes to item numbers 24 to 45, use the space provided in part 14, additional information to provide an explanation that includes why you were arrested, cited, detained, or charged. Where you were arrested, cited, detained, or charged, when, and yada, yada, yada. Most likely, the answers to the questions are going to be no for your K2. All right. So from 25 to 45, it's going to be a no. But please kindly read every question. All right. Just to be sure, just to double check, read all questions before you answer no. All right, even though I said most likely you'll answer no, it's always the best to double check and to make sure you know what you are responding to. Remember, this is a legal document. Once you sign this, you are attesting to everything that you said in here, that it's truthful and accurate to the best of your ability. Sounds good? All right. Next is security and related. So the questions under this section has something to do with criminal acts or terrorism. All right. So you are expected to say no to all of these questions because you are being asked. All right. If you plan or intend to do any criminal acts as listed on the questionnaire or the form or the application form. So you are expected to say no, all right? So sample, do you intend to engage in any activity that violates or evades any law relating to espionage, all right? I'll jump to the next one. Engage in any other unlawful activity, all right? We'll just scan through this because you are expected to answer no. But then again, all right, please read all the questions carefully before you pick your response. All right. Uh, have you ever received any type of military, paramilitary, or weapons training? All right. Okay. So this is not going to be applicable to us, hopefully, because you should have said no to all the questions. All right. So this is the related part. So are you related to someone who did criminal acts or terrorism and stuff like that? All right. Hopefully the answer is no. So sample. Recruited members or asked for money or things of value for a group of organization that did any of the activities described in item number 51A. So committed, threatened to commit, attempted to commit, conspired to commit. All right. So hopefully all your answers to these questions or to this section is a no. All right. And if that is a the case, then we'll proceed to the next page. All right. So it's the same thing. General eligibility and inadmissibility grounds. So have you ever ordered, incited, called for, committed, assisted, helped with, or otherwise participated in any of the following? So acts involving torture or genocide, killing any person. Hopefully, your answers to all of these questions are no. All right. So again, I keep on saying this because I want you to read all questions before you provide your response. That is not my responsibility anymore, all right? I'm here to guide you, but then again, please read all the questions, all right? That is beyond my control, all right? Sounds good? Perfect. All right, public assistance. Have you received public assistance in the United States from any source, including the U.S. government or any state, county, city, or municipality? Public assistance includes um, SNAP. Um, this is just some, some of them that I could think of right now. Unemployment benefits, SSI, supplemental security income. So if you want more information about it, I would recommend for you to go to the census.gov because they specifically detail their types of public assistance that the U.S. government provides. 
All right, so if you did not receive any of those, then you will answer no. All right. Are you likely to receive public assistance in the future in the United States from any source, including the U.S. government or any state, county, city, or municipality? So I answered no because we do not foresee that we will be needing public assistance in the future. All right. Illegal entries and or, or rather, illegal entries and other immigration violations. All right. So hopefully your answers are going to be no. But then again, please read the questions, but we'll just scan through some of the questions. Have you ever failed or refused to attend or to remain in attendance at any removal proceeding filed against you? So these are for people that I believe were about to be deported something to that effect i'm not 100 percent sure please correct me if i'm wrong all right and let's go here have you ever submitted fraudulent or counterfeit documentation to any u.s government official to obtain or attempt to obtain any immigration benefit including a visa or entry into the united states all right so hopefully the answers your answer to these questions are a no, but then again, read it, read, read, read. All right. Oh yeah, it's for, it's for illegal entries. All right, so illegal aliens. Removal, unlawful presence, or illegal re-entry after previous immigration violations. So if you did not have any situation or you did not attempt, all right, to re-enter the United States illegally after previous immigration violations, then your answers are going to be no. And hopefully your answers are no. All right? So same thing. These two questions are related to this section. All right, miscellaneous conduct. Do you plan to practice polygamy in the United States? All right. Are you accompanying another foreign national who requires your protection or guardianship, but who is inadmissible after being certified by a medical officer as being helpless from sickness, physical or mental disability, or infancy as described in INA Section 232C? All right. So basically, these are, you need to have, you are expected to have good conduct here in the United States. All right, so hopefully your answers are no to this question. All right. Yep, so no, no, no. Again, do not forget to read every question. All right, so since all the answers are no, I put an NA in here. All right, let's see, why did I answer no here? Have you ever left or remained outside the United States to avoid or evade training? Okay, so that's a no. It's not applicable to my K2. All right, part nine, accommodations for individuals with disabilities and or impairments. Are you requesting an accommodation because of your disability and or impairment? So that's a no, all right? Because we are requesting, all right? Adjustment of status because of family-based application. All right, we're almost done. Part 10, applicant statement, contact information, declaration, certification, and signature. These are where, or this is the specific section where all your questions are coming from. All right, so applicant statement, I picked, I can read and understand English and I have read and understand every question and instruction on this application and my answer to every question because my K2, all right, do understand and read English okay. And especially he's already, you know, studying, so. That's why I picked that. And then I also picked this at my request, the preparer name in part 12, all right, prepared this application for me based only upon information I provided or authorized. So I put in here my name, all right? So whoever prepared 
the document or the form should be in this section or in this uh, space provided. It could be you or it could be your husband, the petitioner. All right, so that's where you would put the name of the preparer. Applicant's contact information. I put in here my cell phone number. All right, so cell phone number. Both numbers are self, my cell phone number. Daytime telephone and then mobile phone is the same. And then my email address. All right, so this is the applicant's declaration and certification. Copies of any documents I have submitted or exact photocopies of an altered original document. So basically, you are saying that I attest that I did this correctly, accurately, and truthfully to the best of my ability. The documents I, I submitted are um, exact photocopies. They are not altered. All right. I did not do any falsification of documents and all that. And you are attesting that you gave all the accurate information all right kindly read that and after you read that section you will put in here the signature your signature all right and then by mother of minor child because your child cannot sign yet if they are minors all right and then the date you signed the form all right Interpreter, we don't have an interpreter and we don't need one. So everything in this field is NA, not applicable. Everything for the interpreter is NA. All the fields, I put NA. All right. Whenever you see this, it means that I could not type in NA. So I handwritten the, uh, my response or my answer. All right. And then part 12, contact information, declaration, and signature of the person preparing this application. If other than the applicant, then this is going to be the information of either you, the mother, or you, the petitioner. All right, so you'll put your information here. So last name, given name, and then preparer's business or organization name. It's going to be none. And then... In a open and closed parentheses, you will put mother of minor applicant or stepfather of minor applicant or petitioner of the minor applicant. All right, whichever is applicable. And then the mailing address. All right, preparer's contact information, daytime telephone number, mobile phone. So I just put in the same number and then your email address. All right. And then prepare a statement. I picked 7A. I am not an attorney or accredited representative, but have prepared this application on behalf of the applicant and with the applicant's consent. All right. Make sure you are checking all the pages because if you notice in the notes, at the top of this application, make sure you filled out everything completely and accurately. Otherwise, it might cause issues in your application. All right. Double check, triple check, check it four times or multiple times, the better, just to be sure. How I did is like I filled it out and then I asked my husband to double check it for me. All right. Teamwork makes the dream work. All right, prepare a certification. So read this. This is very important you, because you are attesting to this. All right, and then you will sign here. And then the date you sign. All right, let's see what's here. Okay, so this is signature at interview. You won't fill this out yet. You'll do this during your interview with an immigration officer or USCIS officer. All right. And I believe last page is the additional information. Yep. So this is the extra page that is given to you it, to um, include information that could not fit <laughs> in some of the spaces. I'm pretty sure some of you would use this because our address in the Philippines is so long, it could not fit <laughs> in the space provided because it happens to me all the time, every single time. All right, and we are done. 
Thank you so much, guys, for asking me to do this video. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you like this video, guys, and if I helped you, pretty please click on the like button because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. I would greatly appreciate that. And also hit the subscribe button there down below and hit the notification bell because I will also be doing the form for employment authorization and advance parole or the I-765 and I-131 for our K-2s for your guidance as well. Thank you so much. Have a great day, you guys, and good luck and God bless your application. I love you all. Bye.